Okay, this is a study slash revelation video on Melchizedek. I will be extracting information from an extra biblical source as well as the scriptures themselves to prove that contrary to popular belief, Melchizedek was not Christ, nor was he the Messiah in a different embodiment. There's all kinds of speculation, theories, assumptions concerning the identity of Melchizedek, but I can assure you his true identity is contained within the 66 book canon, but when you read about him in Genesis chapter 14, he goes by a different title, a different name. What the 66 book canon compilation of the scriptures is, is nothing more than a brief overview of the events that have transpired in history. It does not give you all the details. That's why you need to look into these extra biblical texts because they fill in a lot of the blanks that are left out from the 66 book canon. Alright? So with that being said, I'm going to read Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 through 20, then I will move forward from there. Genesis chapter 14 and verse 17, it says, And the king of Sodom went out to meet Abraham after his return from the slaughter of Kedalamir and the kings that were with them at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's dale. Now, for those that don't know, the word dale is an old English word. If you were to translate that word into modern English, it is equivalent to the word valley. Here it is. Dale. In the United Kingdom and Great Britain, the word dale means a valley. All right. Keep in mind the King James Version of the Bible was composed in Great Britain in the UK. So don't marvel if you see different words being used than the ones we use here in America. Verse 18. It says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of the Most High God. So here you see Melchizedek being introduced in the scriptures. Now, the word that you see here, the word Salem, is short for Jerusalem. That is the old name of that city. And if you were to look it up in the Strong's Concordance, here it is, Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, it says Salem. The same as Shalem, which could mean peaceful, or Shalem. It could mean the early name of Jerusalem. See that? Same thing here. Nas exhaustive concordance. Shalem, meaning peaceful, or the early name of Jerusalem. Strong's concordance. Shalem, peaceful, and early name of Jerusalem. So, all three concordance pretty much say the same thing concerning that word. Now, if you read it in the Amplified Version of the Bible, they translate those words for you. The word Deo is translated into valley, as you see here. And the word Salem is given more definition. As it says here, later it would be called Jerusalem. So that's why at instances I prefer this version of the Bible because they translate those hard to understand words. So you're not left scratching your head. But anyways, verse 19 says, And he, Melchizedek, blessed them. He blessed Abraham and said, Blessed, favor with blessings, made blissful, joyful be Abraham by God the Most High, possessor and maker of heaven and earth. Verse 20, And blessed, praised, and glorified be God the Most High, who has given your foes into your hand. And Abraham gave him a tent of all that he had taken. Alright? So, which brings me to my next source of information. This is the book of Jasher. For those of you that don't know, the book of Jasher is one of the many books that is referenced within the 66 book canon. However, it is not included in there for some strange reason. And just to give some more credence and validity to this book,
If you take a look at the book of Joshua, chapter 10 and verse 13, it makes reference to this book. As you see here. See that? It says, it's not this written in the book of Jasher. So one can't help but wonder, why is this book not in the 66 book canon? Hmm. And let's give a second witness to this book. So Joshua makes mention of this book. So does the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, Also he bade them teach the children of Judah to use the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. See that? There it is. Remember, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall the matter be established. So there it is. Alright, going back to the book of Jasher. I'm going to scroll down to verse 10, and I'm going to read verses 10 through 12. Now, I'm going to read the exact same story I just read in Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 through 20. This is from the book of Jasher. All right. So verse 10 says, And Bera, king of Sodom, and the rest of his men that were with him, went out from the lion pits into which they had fallen to meet Abraham and his men. Verse 11. And Adonai Sedek, king of Jerusalem, the same was Shem. Here it is in plain English. Adonai Sedek, was the king of Jerusalem, the same was Shem, the second son of Noah, the forefather of people of the Orient, the root for the twelve tribes of Israel. That's who Melchizedek was. It was not Christ. It says that he went out with his men to meet Abraham and his people with bread and wine, and they remained together in the valley of Melech. Now, I know some of you are looking at this verse and saying, wait a minute, it says Adonai Sedek. it does not say Melchizedek. Well, if you take a look at verse 18 from Genesis chapter 14, there's a contradiction, right? Here you have Melchizedek, over there it said Adonai Sedek. However, if you look this word up in the Strong's Concordance, Melchizedek, you'll see that it translates to, see that? It translates to, my king is right, which is short for righteous, an early king of Salem. Now what a coincidence, right? They were both kings of Jerusalem. Here it is again. Now successive concordance. Melchizedek, my king is right. An early king of Salem. Strong, exhaustive says, Melchizedek, it is composed of two words, Melech and Tzedek. Tzedek means righteous. Melech means my king. Hence, king of what? Righteousness. Okay. So, that's what Melchizedek means, king of righteousness. Now, if you, take, if you look up the word Adonai Sedek, which is a word used to describe the king of Jerusalem, in the book of Jasher, it means the same thing as Melchizedek. See that? Adonai Sedek, Strong's Concordance, composed of two words, Adonai and Sedek. And no, you do not say it Adonai Sedek. That's not how you say it. You say it Adonai Sedek. It's composed of two words. And it means, translated, it means Lord of Righteousness. Now, what a coincidence. It translates to the exact same thing as what the name Melchizedek means Lord of Righteousness. And it, look at this, King of Jerusalem. Here it is again, Lord of Righteousness. 
Adonai Sedek. Strong's Concordance. There it is. Lord of Righteousness, King of Jerusalem. So, Adonai Sedek and Melchizedek mean the same thing. Adonai Sedek, Melchizedek, again, they mean the same thing. If you translate the word Melchizedek and Adonai Sedek, they translate to my king is righteous. All right? The only difference is the wording that is used, but they mean the exact same thing. The book of Jasher just uses Adonai Tzedek, Lord of Righteousness, instead of Malke Tzedek, which translates to King of Righteousness. So read it again, verse 11, book of Jasher. And Adonai Tzedek, in other words, and the King of Righteousness, the King of Jerusalem, the same was Shem. So I don't see any contradictions. The words mean the exact same thing. Adonai Sedek, the king of righteousness, who was a king of Jerusalem, the same was Shem, the son of Noah. And verse 12 says, And Adonai Sedek, blessed Abraham, and Abraham gave him a tent from all that he had brought from the spoil of his enemies, for Adonai Sedek was a priest before God. So there's no contradictions. Now, here you see the word Melech, which translated means king. Go back to the book of Jasher. Here it says that they met together in the valley of Melech. In the King James Version, in chapter 14, it says that they met in the valley of Sheba. So there's another contradiction. We're going to take care of this one right now. So Melech, again translated, means what? The valley of Melech. The valley of King So Melech means king, as you saw there, and read it again. Verse 17, so they, Abraham went out, he was passing by, and the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, which is the king's valley. See that? The King's Valley, just as you read in the book of Jasher, chapter 16 and verse 11. But they have, instead of the word kings, they have the word the valley of Melech. If you translate that word Melech, it's equivalent to king. Get it? The king, the, the king's valley, the Melech valley, same thing, same thing. Moving forward. And just in case that didn't sunk in, this is the expanded Bible version of the scriptures. This is Psalm 110 and verse 4. It says, The Savior has made a promise and will not change his mind. Waver. It's talking about his son, Yahushua. It says, He said, This is God speaking to his son, You are a priest forever. A priest like Melchizedek. It doesn't say the priest Melchizedek. No. A priest like Melchizedek. So it's clearly making a distinction between the two. Melchizedek and Christ. It even says here that it is a reference to an ancient priest king in Jerusalem. Ultimately fulfilled in Christ. So Melchizedek Shem was nothing more than a forerunner. To what Christ would accomplish later on. See that? They're not the same person. Melchizedek was Shem. Verse 